The headlines have now changed. President Biden is getting his first opportunity to make history on the Supreme Court. He plans to nominate a black woman to the nation's, nation's highest bench. The court's oldest member, Justice Stephen Breyer, is expected to retire this summer. George Thomas takes a look at the list of potential nominees to replace him. President Biden and Justice Breyer are expected to announce his retirement at the White House today, paving the way for the president to keep his pledge to nominate the court's first African-American woman. The president has uh, stated and reiterated his commitment to nominating a black woman to the Supreme Court and certainly uh, stands by that. I would like to start. Uh, by expressing my sincerest gratitude to you, Mr. Chairman. Set to top the list of potential picks is Ketanji Brown-Jackson, no who got three Republican votes, including South Carolina's Carolina. Lindsey Graham, when the Senate confirmed her to the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals last June. Also on the list is Leonda Kruger of the California Supreme Court, J. Michelle Childs, who serves on South Carolina's federal court, and Judge Leslie Abrams Gardner of the U.S. District Court of Georgia. Justice Breyer's departure won't shift the court's 6-3 conservative majority, but does come at a critical time for Democrats, who've been pushing for the 83-year-old senior justice to retire. It comes at a time when the Democrats have the slimmest, uh, the slimmest control of the Senate, where uh, a new justice would have to be confirmed. And that's also just in advance of midterm elections, where that, uh, that majority is very much in question. So help me God. Congratulations, Justice. Breyer was known as a centrist during his 27 years on the bench, but he consistently voted with the liberal wing of the court. One of Judge Breyer's most important cases was in 2000, when he wrote the majority opinion striking down a Nebraska law outlawing partial birth abortion. Human rights campaign, a uh, pro-LGBT group, uh, calling him a, a wonderful hero of the movement. And you just go down the list. Planned Parenthood, the ACLU, uh, all with very, very kind words. Top Senate Democrats say they'll move quickly to confirm Biden's nominee, even if Breyer does not officially step down until the summer. And despite a 50-50 split in the upper chamber, most experts aren't expecting a rancorous fight. We're not going to have the Brett Kavanaugh fireworks, and we're not going to have any of that. Uh, for sure, or even the Amy, Amy Coney Barrett fireworks. And for that matter, not even the Neil Gorsuch fireworks. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, with us now with more on this story is Michael Schietzelt. He's a senior fellow at the Robertson Center for Constitutional Law at Regent University. So, Michael, let's talk about legacy. What's the legacy of Justice Breyer? Well, Justice Breyer's legacy, first and foremost, you have to remember that Justice Breyer was an academic before he was, he was nominated to the court. And he's, he's shown what the, the, the pros and cons are of nominating an academic to the bench. On one hand, he was very thoughtful, very respectful of his colleagues. He was willing to engage with the toughest intellectual questions that came before the court. But he also had a tendency at times, as academics do, to tie himself up in intellectual knots. So uh, it, people have been shy to nominate academics following Justice Breyer. But you also have to remember he was a staunch defender of the court against some ill-conceived reform proposals, especially recently. And uh, he's also known as a very collegial person. Uh, he, as Neil Gorsuch wrote that he has an endless reservoir of knock-knock jokes. So he'll leave big shoes to fill, though. There's no denying that he was a towering intellect, is a towering intellect. Well, let's talk about who's going to replace him. Do, do you have a, a, a favorite in the growing list of, of potential nominees? Well, as, as the uh, previous video stated, there are definitely two consensus front runners. There's Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson, and or sorry, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, and Justice Leandra Kruger of the California Supreme Court. And of course, you know, both of these women have sterling, impeccable resumes. They both went to very fine law schools, graduated at the top of their classes. Um, Judge Jackson has spent more time on the on the bench. Justice Kruger has been on the high court in California. Um, both of them have had wonderful careers. Both of them are young. Justice Justice Kruger is 45, and Judge Jackson is 51. I want to make sure I get this right. Um, so they're both right there within that window. Both of them are eminently defensible picks for the president. 
Well, let's talk about politics, because I think you have to talk about politics in, in, in changing the Supreme Court. It has been observed that perhaps Breyer is, is throwing the president a lifeline to change the headlines to get us off Ukraine and inflation and the pandemic. It, it, do you think there's a political reason for this announcement right now, or, 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 or should we just take it at face value? Well, I think there's definitely a political reason for the, the announcement, although I don't think we should attribute that to Justice Breyer, who was very upset, according to reports yesterday, that, that this news was leaked. Um, but the White House is desperate for a win, and as soon as they caught wind of it, I'm sure somebody decided to, to put this out there. But this, I mean, again, if, 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 if Joe Biden nominates one of these two women to the court, um, again, it's an eminently defensible pick. They should sail through confirmation unless something really crazy comes out. And I, I just don't foresee that happening. So this has got to be welcome news for the Biden administration. Um, and, and yeah, I think, I think this is a, a, an easy opportunity to rally the base for him by, by fulfilling a campaign promise and also to, to demonstrate at least a semblance of competence that he can get something through the legislature. Do you think Republicans are going to be looking for payback for some of the claims made in pre uh, previous judicial nominations? Are they going to try to do a tit for tat? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if they will. I, d I definitely don't think they should. Um, I think that what happened with Neil Gorsuch was a real own goal by, by the Democrats. I mean, they forced Mitch McConnell to... Uh, nuke the, the rest of the filibuster, what was left of it for judicial nominees, and it really harmed them. If they had, if they had kind of rested and said, you know, Neil Gorsuch is a great pick, we'll wait and, 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 and wage this battle on the next nominee, then it would have been harder for Mitch McConnell to nuke the filibuster for Brett Kavanaugh, given the whole circus around his confirmation. So, you know, I'm obviously not in the caucus meetings. I don't know what's going on on Capitol Hill. But I, I would recommend that they don't try to interfere with this if, if, uh, if Joe Biden does pick one of these two women. No, I, I'll agree with you on that one. I think the politicization of the court has really helped to divide the country, and we need an independent judiciary. Well, Michael, thanks for joining us, and thanks for the insight. In other news, the Federal Reserve is moving closer to hiking interest rates to stop inflation. John Jessup has more on that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? That's right, Gordon. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell signaled Wednesday the Fed is likely to raise interest rates in March with inflation at a 40-year high and consumer prices up 7% over last year. Now, CNN is reporting that the food company Kraft Heinz will raise prices on dozens of products this spring, including Oscar Mayer hot dogs, Velveeta cheese, and Maxwell House coffee. On CBN's Faith Nation program, economist Stephen Moore said the Fed should have started raising rates a year ago to keep inflation at bay. He also blamed excessive government spending and criticized President Biden for saying his multi-trillion dollar spending bill will bring prices down. Well, that, of course, is a laughable line. I don't think any, any <laughs> rational people believe that. Uh, borrowing another $3 trillion and spending another $5 trillion and pushing all that cheap money into the economy is somehow going to lower prices. Uh, it, it, it's actually kind of delusional. It's, it's kind of frightening the president would say something like that. The Fed is expected to raise rates at least four times this year. Well, the United States is standing firm against Russia's demand for Ukraine never to join NATO. The Biden administration rejecting that guarantee in a written response to the Russians. This as U.S. fighter jets are arriving in the Baltic states, part of America's effort to bolster NATO's defenses against a feared Russian attack on Ukraine. That country's foreign minister says he doesn't believe an attack is imminent. America's lead negotiator in diplomatic talks over the crisis says every indication is that Russia will use military force between now and mid-February. Well, the world pauses today to remember the murder of six million Jews by Nazi Germany. With anti-Semitic attacks, uh, anti attacks increasing around the world, International Holocaust, International Holocaust Remembrance Day is an important reminder of the dangers of anti-Semitism. As CBN's Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem, some nations are recognizing the Holocaust for the very first time. From 1939 to 1945, Nazi Germany implemented what it called the final solution to exterminate all Jews from Europe. Tragically, more than half of the Jewish people in Europe died in the Holocaust. To remember this genocide, 
the UN designated January 27th as a day of remembrance. We join together, first and foremost, to honor the memory of those who perished, to ensure they are never forgotten, to give them, as it says in the book of Isaiah, a monument and a name. Yet during a recent vote on a UN resolution combating Holocaust denial, Israel's ambassador to the UN warned the Holocaust is fading from the pages of history. Friends, only 54% of the world population has heard of the Holocaust, with one third of them skeptical of the facts. Some of them believe that the deaths have been exaggerated, while others believe that the Holocaust is a complete myth. Despite that, there is remarkable change in the Middle East this year, as Egypt and the UAE marked the first ever Arab commemorations of the Holocaust. It's a wonderful development to see this relationship between the Arab world and Israel getting to the point where, where we are seeing Holocaust commemorations. Kohanim says it's all due to the change the Abraham Accords have brought to the Middle East. We've seen a brand new face of the Middle East, and that is a face of acceptance of the Jewish state of Israel and acceptance of the Jewish people's sovereignty in the Middle East. And with that, really um, just a sea change in attitudes towards Jews in Israel. Kohenim and others say it's important to remember the Holocaust because they say the hatred that starts with the Jews never ends with the Jews. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. That mantra, Gordon, never forget, and just uh, that statistic that more than half of the world's population has never even heard of the Holocaust, hard to believe. Well, it's hard to believe that the number one religious hate crime in America is against Jewish people. But these are the facts, and we need to honor the, the facts and never forget, uh, and never again. Uh, let's make sure that we never have this kind of Holocaust again in human history. It, it should not happen. This is a very historic moment for Egypt to recognize Holocaust Remembrance Day. That is a sea change. Uh, you go back to the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, uh, the Six-Day War, all of the conflict between Egypt and, and Israel, the pledge to wipe uh, Israel off the map. Uh, to have Egyptian troops uh, march on the streets of Jaffa. It's incredible to see this change, and it, it would be wonderful to see this in Ramallah as well and in Gaza as well, that they come to peace and they recognize Israel has a right to exist. The Jewish people have a right to self-determination. Uh, let's recognize that right and come to peace. The Abraham Accords is absolute sea change in the Middle East. Uh, it's amazing how many countries are, are, are signed on to it and about to sign on to it. We just need to keep moving in the direction of peace. Two vaccinations plus a booster, and you still may be banned from eating in restaurants, even outdoors. That restriction and others are what many students are facing on college campuses due to the Omicron surge. And some of those students are now pushing back. George Thomas explains. For supposedly smart people, they're acting in a very unscientific and stupid fashion. That's Senator Rand Paul's take on what's happening today on a growing number of college campuses. Take this quote, for example. Forget making college memories at Yale. They want to control every aspect of your life, even after two vaccine doses and booster, LOL, wrote Blair Cooper on the Yale Daily News' Facebook page after the university announced this month that it's banning students from eating at local restaurants, even outdoors, to try and cut COVID numbers. At Princeton, fully vaccinated students were told in December they couldn't even leave the county unless they were on a sports team. And at Johns Hopkins University, students are required to be triple vaxxed, wear N95s or double mask, and test twice weekly. Dr. Marty McCary, a Johns Hopkins surgeon and professor, weighed in, writing, at these institutions of higher learning and thousands more, science is supposedly held in the highest esteem. So where is the scientific support for masking outdoors? Where is the scientific support for constantly testing fully vaccinated young people? Where is the support for the confinement of asymptomatic young people who test positive for a virus, 
to which they are already immune on a campus of other immune people. The data simply do not justify any of it. Senator Paul couldn't agree more. I think the mask mandates are wrong-headed and unscientific, but also these draconian things that they're asking of students. I think it's unfair to the students. But really, parents need to wake up. Quit sending your kids to Yale and Princeton if they are a bunch of authoritarians. As Omicron continues to surge and universities double down on COVID restrictions, Senator Paul and others say the science simply isn't there to justify the restrictions. Under 18, the death rate's about one in a million. And above age 80, it's about a thousand times that. It's ridiculous to apply the same precautions that we are prescribing for the elderly to the young. The latest CDC numbers show more than 2,100 people between the ages of 15 to 24 died of COVID in the last 12 months, while 1,900 people died of pneumonia in the same age group. Those age groups, it's less deadly than the seasonal flu. So for the seasonal flu, we've never mandated testing. We've never mandated masks. We've never mandated inoculation for the younger folks. It's why Tice Pat and 14 of his fellow students are suing Ohio University over their COVID protocols, including their vaccination mandate, claiming it's discriminatory. You don't have the vaccine and you got a approved exemption. You're required to test weekly. You're required to do things that other people that did get the vaccine aren't required to do. And that's illegal under Ohio law. Pat argues that OU's rules violate both state law and the Ohio Constitution by not allowing students to exercise their consent to medical treatment. The best thing we can do for students is give them the choice. Putting these blanket orders over everybody and saying everybody has to wear a mask to get a vaccine and take a test, and that's the only way to beat COVID, is anti-science and honestly dangerous. Warner Mendelhall, Tice's lawyer, has filed similar lawsuits against other Ohio universities. His clients have described to him what happens when students test positive on some campuses. Whether or not they're symptomatic, if they test positive on the test, their key cards are shut off. So they can no longer go to class, go to their dorm room, go to the uh, dining hall, go to the gym, go to the library. They have to report to a uh, COVID dorm where there is not proper food or water, or they can go home. And I, that is just wrong. Molly Noble, a parent of an OU student, has joined the class action lawsuit. They need to start looking at the physical and emotional and psychological effects that this is having on this population. Surveys show the pandemic continues to have a major impact on students' mental health. Society is impacted by this pandemic, and we don't yet know uh, the total outcomes of what this is going to do for any generation. Mendenhall says it's time for the country to prepare for a potential new reality, that the virus is here to stay, and that campuses should also rethink its battle lines going forward. It is not a controllable thing. So we need to let that whole story go. We have to live with this. We have to live with this illness. I do think that within a couple of months, so many people will have had this new variant that immunity will be so widespread that hopefully we'll be able to get beyond this uh, pandemic. George Thomas, CBN News. Well, I'll disagree with that one, that I don't think immunity is really going to take hold. And the reason is the virus mutates. And in that mutation, uh, the, the current immunity won't apply to future mutations. We're already seeing that with Omicron, where you can be fully vaccinated, boosted. You can have even caught uh, COVID, and you can still get reinfected. So uh, the the solution here and the, the look forward is uh, how do we live with the virus uh, and how do we function as a culture? Uh, and it's very unfortunate. I don't think the future is going to look back at this time and think we're particularly intelligent in our response. And you look at the various things that came out of CDC where first masks didn't work. If you go back to 2020, they were saying, well, masks aren't going to do anything. Uh, and so now, now all of that's reversed, and then the particular type of mask that you use, what particular vaccine is more effective or not effective, all of these things, uh, it, it's, it, we're getting conflicting messages from the medical community, and unfortunately, that's leading to a whole lot of confusion in our culture. 
then add to it, people are exploiting it for political advantage. Let's just go back to December a year ago. Uh, our president, Biden, our vice president, Harris, held a solemn memorial service for everyone who had died needlessly from COVID, uh, trying to blame the Trump administration for all of those deaths. Well, here we are a year later, the death toll is still there, and I'm not seeing a memorial service. Uh, we've politicized it. It's gone uh, just way out of any kind of norm. The lawsuits are being filed here in Virginia. The, co the governor said, well, let's not wear masks at schools. And so now the schools are filing suit against the governor. You just saw in the report students filing suit in Ohio. Uh, do we really need courts to decide what's the best path forward for, for medical reasons? And I, I have to point to the, the medical community. Uh, I have to point to the CDC and the National Institute of Health. Uh, please get your act together and please lay down what is the actual medical science uh, so we know the way forward. Uh, and we need to start adjusting our thinking we're going to be living with this virus for a good bit of time. Paycheck to paycheck, that's how Jesus and Josefina lived for years. Well, today the couple's home, their car, all their belongings are fully paid for. And here's how a dinner conversation led to a drastic difference in their finances. Between the two of them, retired Sergeant Jesus Mendez and his wife Josie have over 40 years of service. Jesus in the Army, and Josie is a teacher. Now that they're retired, they are still serving others and enjoying life to the fullest. We are involved with the Gideon ministry, and it's just wonderful to work for the Lord. Jesus really likes to go, 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 so we go. When you're blessed, you're supposed to bless others. Years ago, things weren't so rosy. The Mendez were stationed in Germany and struggling to make ends meet for their family of five. As Christians, they knew about tithing, just weren't sure they could give 10%. We made it from paycheck to paycheck. There wasn't really a lot of extra uh, to go around. Then their church hosted a conference and requested volunteers to house the visiting families. The Mendez took in a family of four from Belgium. The evening took an unexpected turn. And right after we sat down, for some reason or the other, the tithing came up. And I says, oh Lord, what is this? When I started tithing, he says, I was tithing not the way I should. And I'm, all this time I'm thinking inside, well, sounds like myself. When I started tithing correctly, he says, I, everything was been going really well for us. So it, it rang a bell in my heart and I said, well, I'm gonna have to talk to Josie. He's a numbers kind of person. So, you know, when he came and told me we're tithing, I knew it had to be God. The very next week, they started tithing 10% of their gross income. Their finances improved immediately. Even though we were tithing, it seemed like the balance in our checkbook was not going down, but it was going up. Many a times we got checks in the mail that we didn't expect. The Lord blessed us that way. Jesus says they also started watching the 700 Club. I started paying attention to Pat and the teachings about the tithing there and how people were blessed. We learned to not put God in a box so that we could be blessed. The Mendez decided to pass that blessing on to others by giving to CBN. 700 Club is always present during crisis. They show up and they have volunteers helping people. They just touches my heart that uh, there's a ministry that is there always to help those in need. Our monies are going to even overseas where water is needed or food is needed. That is awesome that we're contributing even though we're not there. Jesus continued to earn promotions and raises until he retired from the Army in 1998 as an E-7 Sergeant First Class. He also met a Christian financial planner who helped the Mendez take their money even further. Cars are paid, the home is paid, everything in the house that we have in here is paid for, and it, that's all because of the Lord. These days, the Mendez have a secure future, and they say it all began with one step. If you have doubts about tithing, just try it, and you'll see that God will come through for you.
Uh, let me just echo that. If you have any doubt, just try it. Let God prove himself. He watches over his word to perform it, and he will perform it for you. What you just saw with that wonderful couple can happen to you. They had a conversation over dinner. The light went on, and they, and, okay, we're going we're gonna to do this. We're going to live life God's way. We're going to make ourselves blessable. And, and in that, they honored God. Here's the promise, and these are the words of Jesus. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. This isn't some get-rich-quick thing. This isn't some instant, you know, heavenly slot machine, anything like that. But when you start tithing, suddenly you start getting blessings, and it comes, the, the windows of heaven start opening over your life. When you seek God, and you put Him first and His righteousness, when you give generously, cheerfully, wonderful things will happen. If you want to start doing that, give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I want to join the 700 Club. How much is that? Well, it's $20 a month. Some of you can give higher. We have 700 Club Gold at $40 a month. 1,000 Club, $1,000 a year, that's $84 a month. Whatever level, call us now, 1-800-700-7000, or you can go online. You can give at CBN.com. You can give monthly on the Internet. You can also text us now. You can text CBN to 71777. Now, when you join the 700 Club, we have a gift for you. My father's new book on the power of the Holy Spirit in you. In it, you'll discover all the blessings available to you through the Holy Spirit. Take a look. In Pat Robertson's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. The Holy Spirit is infinite. If He pours out blessings on you, He can also pour out blessings on me. There are sufficient resources at the disposal of an infinite God to reward each one of us with bountiful blessings. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. Helping people all over the world without ever leaving your living room. When you're a 700 Club partner, that's what you do every day. We say thank you. One person you've helped is a girl from India named Dishu. Burns from a fire had disfigured her legs and made it difficult for her to walk. But what's worse, her widowed mother had no money for the surgery that her daughter desperately needed. When Dishu was four years old, she fell into a cooking fire and burned both of her legs. The doctor in a village put bandage on and the hospital gave her some medicine for the pain, but it was not very effective. She cried nonstop and I couldn't bear to see her in such agony. The thick scars that formed made it hard for her to walk. Then during Dishu's recovery, her father passed away and her mother became the sole provider for the family. With my husband gone, I had no money to take her to the hospital for treatment. I felt so helpless. I gave up all hope of the issue getting better. When Operation Blessing found out about Dishu, we paid for the surgery she needed. I never thought Dishu would get this medical treatment or that her legs would ever be straight again. Now she can walk normally. It's a miracle. I can walk to school without any assistance, and I can even take my brother on long bike rides. Thanks to the support of Operation Blessing donors, Dishu can run and play again. I'm very thankful to everyone who helped her to get this operation. God bless you. Boy, 700 Club Partners, you made that happen, and we are so grateful to you. This little girl really struggled and would have struggled even more as she continued to grow up. Her mom, a widow, no opportunity to change those circumstances. And then, you know, God uses you to bring such hope into the middle of hopelessness. You come into the middle of that situation, and this little girl is wholly well today, able to do everything. The scarring isn't even 
hardly noticeable on her at all. We say thank you. That's the kind of work you are doing around the world every day. And to those of you who haven't yet joined the 700 Club, you are missing out on such an opportunity to do good, you know, to change lives, to be an influence in the world. We want to say, join with us now. Our number's toll free. It's so easy to do that. You call 1-800-700-7000 and you just say, I want to join the 700 Club. Lots of options for you. General membership is 65 cents a day, $20 a month. But look, you could be a 700 Club Gold member, $40 a month, or a 1,000 Club member, $84 a month. Join the 2500 Club. That's $209 a month. Our founders join us at $5,000 a year. That works out to $417 a month. And when you call and join today, whatever level you decide to join at, would you do it using Pledge Express? That's electronic monthly giving. It means your bank does all the work. You don't have to have stamps or envelopes or remember anything. You can stop it whenever you want. But it does save some, save some additional costs for us so we can put even more of your gift into the lives of people like Dishu. So call now. Say I want to use Pledge Express and we're going to send you Power for Life teachings. You'll get this every month for using Pledge Express. And then don't forget our gift to you when you join the 700 Club is the power of the Holy Spirit in you. This is Pat's latest book and you don't want to go without it. So call now, 1-800-700-7000. Gordon? Well, as a CBN partner, you provide food and clean water to people in need, as well as the life-changing surgeries like the one you just saw. You also help spread the gospel around the world. And right now, I want you to meet a boy who was born into a Buddhist family. Here's how he met Jesus through CBN's Superbook. Nine-year-old Seiya first heard about the gospel by watching CBN Superbook cartoons at a church near his home in Cambodia. I was playing near the church. The pastor invited me to come in. I wonder why so many kids that I knew were there. That day, Seiya told us he watched the Superbook episode about David and Goliath. Goliath swung his sword at David, but David threw a stone at his forehead. Goliath fell down and David cut him with the sword. I love David because he's strong and brave. Saya told us he'd grown up in a traditional Buddhist family. My grandmother said if I burn incense and pray that I would receive what I asked for, but I never received anything, so I did not like to go there anymore. He said after he watched Superbook, he decided to pray to become a Christian. After I believe in Jesus, I was so happy because I know if I have faith in God, I will be strong just like David. This past year during COVID, things have been tough for Seiya and his family. In the morning, I went for the rice pot, but there's nothing to eat. So I asked my grandmother, what do we have to eat? And she said, I am sorry, child. There is no food for breakfast or lunch. When CBN's Orphan's Promise heard about their situation, we gave the family food packs, which they said they were able to make last for two months. Now that the church program has reopened, Sayat took his brother P. Seth to watch Superbook. P. Seth prayed to become a Christian, and now their grandma goes to church with the boys too. Thank you to all the donors who gave us food and helped us know Jesus through Superbook. That thank you goes all the way to you at your home. Because of you, we were able to share the gospel. We were able to share needed food, supplies. It's wonderful what happens when people join together and say, let's make a difference in the world. Uh, let's reach out with hands of love and compassion. Let's love our neighbor as ourselves. Let's love people around the world. And most importantly, let's preach the gospel. If you join the 700 Club, a portion of every gift goes into the work of CBN International uh, to share the gospel around the world. So if you're not a member, call us and join, 1-800-700-7000. If you are a member, consider increasing, consider going to 700 Club Gold or consider the 1000 Club. Either way, do it through Pledge Express. That's electronic monthly giving, the bank doing all the work. We send as our gift to you Power for Life monthly teaching CDs or downloads, your choice. 
Uh, so if you'd like those, just give us a call, 1-800-700-7000, or you can go to CBN.com and you give monthly on the internet. You'll automatically sign up for Pledge Express. We also have this new text to give where you can text CBN, those letters, CBN, to 71777. Either way, do it now. Now, when you become a 700 Club member, we'll send you a copy of my father's new book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. You'll learn how to get direct guidance from God to empower your life. Take a look. In Pat Robertson's latest book, the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Discover the life that is available to you. This I can say with certainty. If a believer sincerely cries out to the Holy Spirit for guidance and direction, the Holy Spirit will move heaven and earth to keep his servant from being misled. He will bring us direct guidance and the answers we need for each step of our lives. Get Pat Robertson's latest book when you become a CBN partner. Call now or go to CBN.com. As I wrote this book, I felt that I was personally on the edge of something so enormously wonderful. It should be made available to everyone who has been filled with the spirit of the living God. CBN presents The Power of the Holy Spirit in You, a new book by Pat Robertson. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, nothing is impossible to us. In this powerful book, Pat illuminates the work of the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible and reveals how the Spirit is working in believers today. I marvel at the strength God gives His people when we realize that the Spirit of God will go like a mighty warrior before us and that none of our enemies can stand against us. Get Pat's book and discover how you can have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Call now or go to CBN.com. Still ahead, the LA Rams powerhouse playmaker. I'm now being able to live out my dream. Cooper Cup reveals his secret weapon. You can't find a better playmaker than Jesus Christ. And tells what trumps his quest to be the NFL's best. He's called me to even greater things. Welcome back to Washington for the CBN News Break. North Korea reportedly test fired two more ballistic missiles this week. The South Korean military reporting the weapons were uh, probably short range and flew nearly 120 miles before crashing into the sea. North Korea has held six rounds of missile tests this month alone. Observers believe the regime wants to pressure the Biden administration into resuming nuclear negotiations. Well, a winter storm left a dusting of snow on Jerusalem this morning. The city's holy site showing a touch of white. Schools and businesses shut down for the day as children took advantage of the rare opportunity to play in the snow. Major highways into Jerusalem and the West Bank were also shut down. Snowfall in Jerusalem is uncommon, happening perhaps once a winter or less. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at cbnnews.com. The most catches, receiving yards, and touchdowns during the season. Only four players have earned the NFL's coveted triple crown. Los Angeles Rams superstar Cooper Cup is the latest member of this exclusive club. Sports reporter Tom Beering sat down with Cooper to find out what makes him a number one playmaker. A game can provide a remarkable emerging journey, even at a distance. It has for Cooper Cup. The Rams' playmaking receiver is shaped by bloodlines from Yakima, Washington's first family of football, three NFL generations worth, while setting multiple college career records from Eastern Washington before making an immediate NFL impact in Los Angeles. So Coop, your offensive awareness has almost made you a quarterback whisperer, chemistry with your quarterback. What's most important to you about earning trust? Huge. Us to ask the quarterback to sit back there in the pocket knowing that there's guys bearing down on him. Him just being able to trust that we're going to be at the right spot at the right time, I think is everything in terms of that relationship. And if we're not doing that, you know, that's when you know, things got to go off schedule. Now you're asking our quarterback to you know, have to make a play because we're off as receivers. Football's a game about game speed. How do you prepare yourself? 
to what that requires. Yeah, well, I think it's just practice. Uh, our approach to practice, I think, is paramount. You know, we always say that practice preparation equals game reality. Exactly what we want it to be in terms of our, our tempo and our focus going into that and just being able to execute. You know, when we get to the game, we step on the field on Sunday, we've already performed this over and over again during practice. So much about football is preparation. I mean, you go out there on Sunday with a quieted mind, be able to just play the game that you've prepared all week for. Does the tempo and rhythm of football heighten your awareness just translating into life? I mean, you're a dad now, you've got no choice probably by that, right? <laughs> it's interesting because I feel like, you know, sometimes you come into work and you gotta be laser focused all the way through. And that in another way, it's nice to, be able to go home and be like, oh, well, I don't have to be like that right now. But yeah, we do have a one-year-old now, so uh, I get the 24-7 uh, training experience. Looking back now, story, record-setting career at Eastern Washington, how did that prepare you for the NFL? Going to Eastern, I had coaches that came around me that never let me become complacent with anything. Yes, this is good, but this is how you can be better. It was just calling me to something greater than I'm seeing for myself. Look at how much better you can be if you can fix these things and get in there and say, well, this was good, how can I be better? Your family, the Cups are now just the fifth to have three generations drafted in the NFL playing the game. Your dad as a former quarterback, your granddad as a former lineman. What kind of support did that give you? Uh, I mean, it's been incredible to have uh, such experience to lean on and just uh, perspective. I think how much they love their family, how much they took care of things, how they treated people. I'm now being able to live out my dream, but I have such bigger things happening in my life that are beyond football. As much as I absolutely love football and know like I'm gonna put everything I have into it, that I've got a family at home, and my faith in Christ as well, that just is more important to make sure that's healthy. That's something that my, you know, my dad and grandpa showed me. You're back from the ACL tear. What did you learn about yourself? You never would have seen by the waiting, the wondering, and the rehabbing. Uh, that's a good question. There's a lot of lessons I think I learned through this, but I think if I pinpoint down, it's that I can't do this by myself. First thing that comes to mind is just the spiritual battle that goes on when something like this happens. Just reactively is why, you know, what caused this to happen? I needed God, I needed to trust in what my faith was, just having my wife and son to be able to push me through this. The teammates, the coaching staff, the training staff, strength staff. I mean, I just had a team around me that encouraged me, you know, really showed me how important it was to have people around me that God really placed in my life, seeing how much of a blessing that is. Faith is a huge part of that. You know, our faith is that, uh, you know, that we're not number one. That we're not the number one focus of our lives, and it's others, and it's it's Christ first, and then it's others, you know, starting with the closest people to you. I know he knows there's purpose in everything, and he'll look back and know that he's grown from it, and he's a stronger person, and hopefully he can help someone else down the road that goes through the same thing. All right, hey, it's a great Rams win today. Great day for the Rams, great day for Coop. You are referred to as a playmaker, altering a game, impacting a game. Off the field, you ever consider Jesus Christ being a playmaker in lives? He might just be the greatest playmaker that's ever lived. Restoration, redemption, sacrifice, and what he laid on the line to change the world forever. You can't find a better playmaker than Jesus Christ. Coop, who is he to you? I don't think there's words to really at the very basic levels of my life as a husband, as a father, football player, knowing how much of a failure I am at these things. If it wasn't for my faith, if it wasn't for knowing that Christ has told me who I am in his eyes, and know that no matter how far short I fall on all these things, that he's bridged every gap and that he's called me to even greater things. That's a lot of wisdom from a really young man. You know, he's had an amazing life, and yet you hear someone that's as successful as that candidly talking about where he falls short of the mark. You know, today, as you're watching this story, I hope if you're struggling with your faith that you see that what makes Cooper Cup solid is his faith. It's that he knows that he knows that he knows that God is faithful, 
that Jesus is real and a part of his life, that the Holy Spirit dwells in him, that his life decisions are made by his faith, his questions are answered by his faith. If you're struggling, we have a wonderful little sheet we'd like to send to you. It's called Faith, God's Power in Your Life. This is free. We just want to encourage you as you walk your own journey in faith that you would understand who God is and how much he loves you and how much he's available in every aspect of your life, just like Cooper Cup knows. This is free. If you call our toll-free number, we're happy to send it to you. It's 1-800-700-7000. Just say, I'd like the faith article and we'll send this to you right away. Time for some email. Oh boy. You ready? Okay, this first one comes from Aaron who says, I'm a middle school reading intervention teacher. My students are years behind in their academics and are mostly from single mother homes. I pray for them but still feel overwhelmed and frustrated. I have felt lately that God wants me to stop speaking about all the problems I see and speak life over all of them prophetically. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> how can I speak life and success over them without it being delusional and denying reality? Well, Aaron, I think your frustration is shared by a lot of teachers today, uh, particularly teachers in our inner cities, teachers who are in, in schools where the neighborhood just doesn't have enough money for the month of bills that they face. And so you look at that and then you look at uh, single mother households, you look at broken homes, you, you look at what future is there. Um, but here's the great thing. The words of Jesus, they are life. You get the wonderful opportunity to speak life. When Jesus spoke to Lazarus and said, come forth, was that a hopeless situation? Answer, yeah. I mean, the people were saying, well, but Lord, he stinketh. Uh, there were a lot of complaints. Lord, where were you? You know, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. All of this negativity all around, it doesn't get any more negative than somebody's four days dead. But Jesus spoke life. And Lazarus, how he heard those words is a mystery because he's dead. How does he hear? But he came forth. Realize these words have creative power. When you speak with the anointing, when God is speaking through you, you don't add to those words, you don't take away from those words, you can speak life over every child. And in that, you can impart wonderful things. You can speak a destiny and a future over them. So do that. Here's how you do it. You ask God, what do you want me to say? And then you get still. And you can even say, could you give me a verse for this child? So you have every confidence that you're speaking God's word. Give me a verse. And then you repeat that. And you continue to repeat that. And you continue to speak life. I think I just did a long teaching. But anyway. no, but, but really, it's true. <laughs> I mean, don't you love that she says, I felt lately that God wants me to stop. So she doesn't yeah. even know how to do it, but God's speaking in her heart. Go, Aaron. <laughs> yes and amen. Do it. This is Jay who says, when a Christian dies, do they get a brand new body immediately in heaven? Oh, I hope so. Someone said their loved <laughs> I hope so too. Yeah, well, someone, you know. someone said their loved one was running in heaven right now in a brand new body. Yeah, but the Apostle Paul lamented, you know, who will free me from this body of sin and death? And so, uh, you know, yeah, I hope so. Is there a resurrection of the body that has yet to happen? Yes. Um, but at the same time, uh, when Jesus um, uh, uh, died, the graves opened in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And so there, there, I, that gives me hope that there are multiple resurrections, that when I die, I'm leaving this body of sin and death behind. And I hope I'm getting a real slim, fit, <laughs> new one. Get in line. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, let, let's hold on to that hope. We leave with this verse, verse from Philippians. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For Terry, for me, for all of us here, God bless you. And may God speak to you today. Just ask him.